This is the Main Attraction Podcast. Now here are your hosts, Justin Strong and Ryan Nelson. Welcome to the Main Attraction Podcast, where we discuss the biggest television shows and movies in the entertainment industry. I am your host, Justin Strawn. Joining me each week is the other host of the show, who is on pins and needles awaiting the sure-to-be-hit Gray's New Orleans Family Burn Unit, Ryan Nelson. Your wife's going to watch that one, isn't she? (laughs) I bet she probably will. (laughs) Justin, I have great news. I have been to Reddit, and we will discuss the cookie theory. Okay, well, I haven't been to Reddit, but I'm wondering if that's one of my theories. So that's that's it. I, I, I'm wondering if that you're going down the same road that I'm going to go yeah, down. So I bet you are. So yeah. so I, I can't wait to do that. So uh, we'll get that here in just a little bit. But until then, let me finish our little spiel here. If you've been listening to the podcast since we started the podcast last year, thank you for continuing to listen and making us part of your day. If you're new to the show, we hope you enjoyed as we talk about the third episode of the third season of Only Murders in the Building on Hulu titled Grab Your Hankies. If you are new or regular and would like more access to the show, visit our Patreon page and become a patron of the Main Attraction Podcast. Go to patreon.com slash the Main Attraction Podcast and you can get Patreon only content. You can support us at a three, five, ten, or twenty dollar level. When you join up, we'll shout you out here on the show. If you want ad free access to the podcast, any level of being a Patreon supporter will get to the show ad free. There are other benefits as well, though. Uh, you can get bonus episodes. There are all different types of things out there for you as well. Uh, you don't even have to sign up for uh, for one of the higher amounts to get though so uh, if you want to get some of some bonus content out there you can go to patreon and sign up for that if you can't be a patron though you could help the show out by rating us on spotify and apple podcast we would love to get a five star rating from you and if you have time if you're on apple podcast we'd love it if you wrote us a review both of those things go a long way in getting the the podcast into the ears of new listeners. Uh, and if you would like to interact with the show we'd love for you to do so you could send us an email to main attraction pod at gmail.com Watching Kyle's unboxing videos again? Yeah, he always finds the coolest... No way! A robot dog? Gotta ask where he got it. Or use your Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. Just draw a circle around the dog on your screen, and it shows you where to buy it right in the app. Oh, I just learned a new trick. And that for once, I beat Kyle to the next big thing. Circle it, find it, with the new Galaxy S24 Ultra, and circle the search with Google. Get yours now at Samsung.com. Internet connection required. Results may vary based on visuals. All right, so this is the third episode of the third season of Only Murders in the Building. Uh, general thoughts, and then we'll kind of get into specifics. Uh, another fantastic episode, and I'm going to pat myself on the back for a second. I mentioned last week, I was like, I find it odd that Ashley Park and Jesse Williams are in this movie, <laughs> are in this show, so. and they have they are not talking very much. They are very capable, and they were a huge part part of of this episode Uh, because i was like why is jesse williams just in the background you know yeah he could lead his own show so that was interesting i do think they kind of hinted at some stuff with both of them that i uh we could talk about that Uh, i did think this episode not as much the humor no there wasn't but my god the acting from martin short and meryl streep i know this is hard to believe incredible (laughs) first (laughs) scene Her singing at the end? Oh, fantastic. I thought I was going to tear up, man. I'm not kidding. Yeah, it was really good. I was really impressed by a lot of this episode uh i'll go ahead and do the thing that we said we weren't going to do the, you know the thing that we say you know i'm a little concerned uh-huh. that they're going to, uh, the thing that concerns me a little bit i don't know if you noticed but this episode's a little bit longer than some of the previous ones it was about 38 minutes long uh yeah, yeah. I, I you know i don't know that getting towards that 45 minute to an hour range is where they not need to good. go with this but not good yeah so like i said i'm a little concerned with with them getting the episodes a little bit longer but maybe it's just because they've got so much more of a cast with yeah. with uh meryl streep with paul rudd the, the, they've got to find ways to get more screen time for everybody but like i said that's yeah. probably the only like i said there's that thing that i you know i'm trying my best to because they've always yeah. they've always proved us wrong uh I've, I just, I've always liked the fact this thing is going to be a half an hour. Don't, la- don't lasso us. Don't lasso us. <laughs> yes, exactly. Don't do that. So We don't need an hour and 15 episodes of comedies. No, we don't. We do not need that. So, like I said, I'm, that's the only con- real concern I have about when this. But that, other, you ahead. know what? I never, that didn't hit me, but you are 100% right. And I just mentioned that it wasn't as funny of an episode. Right. So, like I said, I'm a little concerned about that going forward with it. But other than that, though, I thought that it was... Mm-hmm. Uh, just another really strong episode. I thought it was a. They're doing a really good job of unraveling the show, and I think there's a lot 
I think they did a lot of interesting things that make you think and that are kind of they're pointing you in certain directions. Look, yeah. you, you mentioned one thing, uh, you know, Ashley Park and Jess. Is it Jess or Jesse Williams? I thought it was Jesse Williams. I can't remember, but you're, you're probably right. I can't, I, can't, I can't remember. But uh, Ashley Park is doing the voiceover this time around. I mean, she's the one who's yeah, giving, Jesse Jesse Williams. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she's the one who's giving the voiceover. She's the one who's, uh, you know, kind of like they're putting the spotlight mm-hmm. on her uh, quite a bit in this one. Uh, Jesse Williams is going his character, the the cameraman. I can't remember what his actual name. Tobert. 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 How could I forget Tobert? Robert with the T. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, but they're obviously giving. You know, they gave us a lot of screen time with him and Mabel. And there's a lot of things that, you know, I've got, I'm, you know, I try my best. I didn't want to go down, you know, theory road like I've done with the first Let's two seasons it. of this. Let's but do it. We're Let's doing, do it. I couldn't help but sit there and wonder, like, okay, what are we doing with this? Like, so, for example, my first one, we'll get to the, your cookie theory. At least I think we're going to get to your cookie theory one in a little bit. When Mabel and Tobert, or Tobert, I can't remember how he pronounces it. Uh, I how would you? I don't know if it's Robert. Tobert, like, Tobert, 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 yeah. Tobert, Tobert. Uh, So, like, when they're, you know, up in the, when they're up in the, the, the penthouse and they're, you know, kind of like being coy with each other before they finally admit mm-hmm. to each other that they're looking for, for something. Uh, and he gives this thing about, he, he tells this story about the elephant and yeah. that the, the elephant is dying. And he first says that he saves him, uh, but then he later confesses to Mabel that he actually didn't save yeah. it. The mother ba- the mother elephant did finally come along and, and get the elephant and get the baby elephant out. I couldn't help but wonder if, you know, the actual elephant in the room is actually was this if this was actually a story about him filming ben and he was actually there when this was taking mm-hmm. place and he didn't do anything to save him uh and now that you know because he oh, says oh justin you're you, you are just scratching my back keep going sir <laughs> like like so like because he says there he says there towards the end when he's talking to mabel after the, when she finally confronts him because she needs the password he says you know i, I didn't do anything to save the, the elephant then and he said i, I don't want to do that again so that makes like i said that makes me wonder if yeah it was actually ben he saw that he saw get Get murdered or get like try to get murdered and he doesn't want to be in that situation again he wants to try to help find the killer now like i said well, i don't know what your thoughts i think you're on to some i love the elephant in the room i could see them a hundred percent saying that at the end you gave me the elephant story when you when the elephant in the room was you yes. were there in the murder to me he he felt guiltier than kimber did oh yeah i, I, I thought that too I thought it was odd. They're there at the. He shows up at the same time as Mabel. Right. I think he's also trying to find out what information the podcast has. Yeah. And I could see him deleting something from oh, yeah. the podcast. Well, yeah. Uh, and I mean, let's just say Jesse Williams is a very attractive guy, very charming. Right. Could easily distract Mabel, which he already has. Right. So uh, I, I think he became my number one suspect after this episode. And. He's a big star. I yeah. mean, he's a star of great of Grey's Anatomy, right. uh, ironically. So uh, <laughs> I'm sure there's a reason for that. They put that in there. Yeah. So I mean, like for him being in this season, that makes sense for I, him to be the killer. Yeah, uh, and like I said, now I will say this: I thought he was much more. He was much more suspicious, obviously, until you get to the very end when you know Kimber is trying to like, was doing like joining the I song know. and then she says she doesn't mm-hmm. have the hanky and we'll talk more about the hankies in a little bit but uh yeah, yeah. and then you know her voiceover is something along the lines of i know you, somebody stealing the spotlight or something like that and what do you do to i can't remember what the exact line that was feels like such a red hair it though. really does it really does but i was like okay well they're they're really trying to point us in that direction now so uh like i said that that was just that obviously you know, jumped out to me when I yeah. when I was watching it. So well, you know, hopefully they let her sing because she's like a Tony nominated yeah, uh, uh, actress for for singing as well. Yeah. So like you know, I, well she could t- she was yeah she's phenomenal singing, singing with uh, yeah, it, Meryl Streep. <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, I thought that she felt like a red herring to try to make it look like it's her that she's not going to. The Hanky will be just some random story. Yeah, I, I think you're probably right about that. So, uh, all right. So, Cookie Theory. Now, here was all right when you mentioned that. So, here's what I was thinking because we obviously see the video. We see the video of, yeah. of Ben talking, and uh-huh. he's talking to what we think is someone, but the other person who's supposedly in the room never says anything. So, I was thinking. Huh? 
in the very first episode, he talks about yeah. how cookies are, these cookies will be like the death of his, the death of his career. Is he actually talking to cookies that are poisoned? That, that, that is what everyone thinks. Okay. Yes. Okay. Like I said, I, I did not, I've not been to Reddit on this. So, uh, yeah. but yeah, that's, that was immediately what I thought. I was like, he's not talking to yeah. He's got to be talking to something. And I thought, oh yeah, he right. talked about cookies and now he can't have cookies because they're awful to him. So that was what yeah. I really went to. Yeah. I mean, it, that has to be what it is. It it's just, it's, it's just so perfect. It's so perfect for the show. Yes. It makes sense. It's hilarious. Uh, we would get more picture, more of Paul Rudd doing that. So I, I'm hoping it's got to be what it is. It feels, it feels very much like, like that is the case. So, and if it like I said, if I'm right about that, then it's going to be, it's because it's only obvious that because like, I'm right. like some genius. Cause that felt well, really and obvious. Let, and let's mention Donna and Cliff. Still seem really bizarre. Yeah, the uh, the breastfeeding story. Yeah, they are really creeping me out with this. Uh, obviously, you know, they they've gotten revealed that these aren't actually mom. I'm hoping they reveal at some yeah, point they're not I, mom I, and son yeah. because yeah, yeah. it's odd, man. It's really it odd. odd, and it's like hard to yeah. watch. I mean, yeah, yeah. And yeah. if you're not sure what we're talking about, this is the the producers who is the mom and the son who are constantly like really kissing each other, and yeah. you know the whole breastfeeding story about you know when you at eight at eight. I'm like, oh my gosh, really? Ugh. Yeah, it's it's really tough to watch that and part of it. D- d- didn't sound like he stopped. No, it didn't eight. sound like he stopped today. Didn't sound like he's <laughs> he's ever stopped. To be perfectly honest no, with you. No. So, yeah, so I would say we still have to watch them. And then uh, Dickie uh, has moved on pretty quickly from his brother, Don. Yeah. Although they showed him in being upset a couple yeah, times. Yeah, it's like he can't separate himself from his brother. Like, he's been so his brother. Yeah. He's been his brother's yeah. manager, I guess, or whatever, for so long that now that he's gone, he doesn't know how to do anything else. That that scene there in the, in the penthouse where he just kind of, like, loses it uh, and just was so tra- traumatized by the fact that he broke something in, in his brother apartment there's something weird going on there uh i don't know exactly what but there's definitely something weird going on there to say the least so uh, i'll be really interested to see how that plays out oh and one more thing about tobert we have to mention because early in this episode when they were looking at the suspects charles says a female killer that's been so overdone yes i know so like i said it's uh, like that ha- and we've had female killers the first the first two, two seasons. seasons right so that has to be they have to be when they look at the end that's got to be like we gave you clues right uh, yeah like i said i feel like that's i don't know if they do a female killer the third time third straight season that will be yeah. i'll be really interested by that because that's just such an odd Meryl Streep is the only way that you could sell me on making sense yeah I, I'm, I'm with you on that so uh i'll be really interested to see how they they play the rest of that out so um it's kind of tough to talk about some of the other stuff that goes on in this because the, the plot around this one is basically they've kind of got two things going on it's a weird dynamic with but i think the way that they are mixing together because you've got you got uh oliver played by martin short who is doing now he's doing the musical now he is you know kind of separated from from charles and mabel he's separated from those two yeah and i wasn't really sure i was gonna if you told me they were gonna do this in at the beginning of the season before the season actually started i probably told you i don't like it i don't want them doing that yeah but it's working and like i I don't really know why so far yeah yeah i think the other characters have been good I think the yeah. other the other characters. I mean, you have Meryl Streep, right? Yeah. I mean, everybody in this cast is like a like a, a, a Tony a nominated. Like even like Donna and Clifford are like uh, theater legends, right? You know? So I think that's they're really good actors. I'm with you. I miss the Mabel Oliver uh, dynamic dynamic of like where Oliver thinks he's young like her. I, yes. I do miss that. Yeah, and then making fun of Charles. So that's that's a miss. I'm with you. I I don't want them uh, away from each other too long. Right. But so far it's working. Yeah, I'll be interested to see if they keep it up for this entire season or if they try to bring them all three yeah. back together again. Also, that like I said, that part of it. Oh, they got it. they got to be back together. Yeah, I feel like they will. I just don't know exactly how they're going to do it or when they're going to to do it. But uh, uh, like I'm not even sure that Charles is even completely aware that because they're they're doing this on purpose like the entire cast is basically the entire suspect list uh yeah so including that they, him yeah including him uh, he he's on there as well so they're like so they're doing they're doing a really good job of like 
putting the two, trying to like make the two stories mirror each other, for, kind of in a certain, in, yeah. in a weird way. But like I said, I'll be really interested to see if they can keep that up for how or how long they can keep that up, and when they, what it is that kind of brings the all three of them back together. Because mm-hmm. I mean, they even kind of go meta with it because um, Charles, you know. When they're recording, and Charles says, "You know, I really miss uh, Oliver's mocking." Yeah. And Mabel does that really great part where she actually, yeah. you know, gives him that mocking for him, so he'll, he'll feel it. So, uh, it's 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 a really fascinating stuff that they're doing. But Charles, what I like about this, well, let's let's, let's, take, let's take a quick break, then we we'll talk about Charles and Mabel a little bit. All right, so Charles, he's kind of the one who's providing the humor this time around because, yeah, yeah, he is. Uh, He's trying to get the hankies. Like the, the Mabel presents early on in this episode that obviously somebody he had that Ben had someone else's hanky when he plummeted to his death uh, in the elevator shaft, and whoever is missing his hanky, or whoever is missing her, his or her hanky, they have to be the killer. That's the that's yeah. kind of the thing that they're putting forth in this. And so Charles is, is doing his best to try to get the hankies. And every time that he is like in rehearsal and he's talking, he's, <laughs> he's putting all these things for things to try to get the hankies. And it's, it's really that's like a it's there's not as much humor, but he's providing it for us. And it's really good. Yes, yes, he's very funny because he's so terrible at it. Yes, he is. he's so terrible at working with people. And I love how like he even talks about. Uh, well, I didn't know this cast because you know they were all such big fans of Brazos, <laughs> right, exactly. so I had to you know stay away. Like none of them knew who he was. Exactly. Like, I just love how his interactions and, and just how forced he is. Steve Martin, man, he, he he still has the goods. Yeah, he absolutely still has the goods. There's no question about that. Uh, I like the I like the interaction that Mabel is having with with Tobert. I think. Yeah. I don't know where they're going with it. Uh, yeah. Obviously, there's you know there's some chemistry there. There's some there's some romantic vibes obviously there between the two of them. Uh, I do think it's interesting that we haven't even seen her mention what's her name from season two. Uh, the character that we all kind of thought was the guilty party for for quite a bit in season two. Uh, Cara Devaney. Yeah. Yeah. They, 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 well, they, they kind of broke up. Didn't yeah. They? I guess they kind of did. Uh, well, I wasn't really sure if like that was a permanent thing or if they were trying to get back to there. So like that, I wasn't yeah. really sure how, how that was playing out. But, um, uh, but yeah, they're, I like what they're doing there. Like I said, I, it could be because the two of them are just trying to play each other. I don't know, yeah. but I'll be really interested yeah. in what, what road they take those two characters down. Yeah. And I like how the writers, of this show have no problem making fun of themselves. Because Tobert says uh, at one point, I like the first season a little more than the second. (laughs) (laughs) I I think that's great too, because that's very much a meta thing there for for you know any show really for but uh, obviously for this one as well. So Uh, one other things I think that was also really funny in this is Oliver, who is obviously had a heart attack in the previous episode, is just stressed out to the max. He's literally, oh yes, he's literally writing a musical in one night for his producers, uh, and like I, he was taking it down these weird, weird roads where like they, they were crab people. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just so odd. It was it was hilarious. And Martin Short, such a good like musical person. Yes, he is. Uh, so so using all of his talents in the show, which is just just so great. Yeah, it's probably one of the more underrated aspects of of mm-hmm. his career is the fact that he is quite you know he is quite musical he he has quite a bit yeah, of talent one, he has won a uh tony yeah he has so like i said that's probably one of the more underrated aspects of of his career that we don't think about that much because he hasn't done it a whole lot in some of, in his previous performances so like i said right, i'm right. glad that they're they're going out and giving us that part of of him in this in this particular season um Obviously, we haven't talked about Meryl Streep, but Meryl Streep has plays in a huge role. Oh, in, odd. I know. <laughs> the biggest star of all time. Uh, you know. And we haven't even talked about her yet, but we need to talk about her. So, obviously, uh, Loretta's character has quite a bit going on in this episode because she is... she Dickie is apparently taking up her as a client, and he has worked her into this... Uh, this pilot for uh, what did I call it? What was it again? Gray's New Orleans Family Burn Unit, which is a spinoff of a spinoff of a of a sideshow, or I don't remember exactly how it's. Uh, it's it was something how it's, uh, and she has a limp. And she has a limp. So uh, this is what Dickie has has arranged for her, and she's super excited about. It. But the problem with it is she the filming will 
conf- uh, be in conflict with the with uh, with uh, Death Rattle Razzle. I think that's the name of the new uh, yeah, yeah. of the new musical. But and Martin Short, his character Oliver reacts incredibly poorly. He uh, oh yeah when he says well, he when she he's confronted with this news. He tells her you're under contract and he's not going to let her go. Uh, and it's just an absolutely horrible moment from him. Uh, yeah. And like I said, it's it, his character has been so likable. It was just mm-hmm. really, really hard to see that, but it worked just in the contents of where, in the context of where they are, just because he is this right. stressed out uh, director, he's this stressed out uh, tr- pr- trying to put this this musical on. So I, it worked for me in that sense. Normally, that kind of thing probably wouldn't. Yeah, and I, he apologized. At yes, the he end, does. Mm-hmm. And it was willing to forgive, you know, forgive to let her go. Not, right. So, like, uh, yeah. I, I, I thought if they didn't have that, it wouldn't have worked as well. Right. Because you don't want to see Oliver as a jerk. No, you don't. You don't want to see him as a jerk. Because he's, he's not. He's not a jerk. Unless he's talking yeah. to Charles, and then he can become a jerk. Right. But it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that's different. Yeah, that's different. So, uh, But, yes, yeah, and so Meryl Streep, you know, she's got her... She's doing such a good job of playing this character. Oh, who's, she is. And, look, it's she's not the main character, uh, which yeah. is so odd for to see Meryl Streep in, in a supporting role. Uh, but obviously, you know, she's in her 70s, I would assume, uh, at this point. I, be, I bet she's loving this. Yeah, she probably is. I can't imagine that she's not, or else she wouldn't have signed on for it. Uh, it just gives her a chance to do something that's different and that's not quite what we're used to seeing her in. And she is just absolutely wonderful as this Loretta, she who, because she's she's so sweet, she's so kind. Uh, and, you know, it just makes me wonder if they're going to do something completely different with her by the time we get to the end of this thing. So, Well, we know Ben did not like her and hissed at her when right. he was right before he died. So there has to be some, some Loretta Ben backstory that we're going to get at some point. Yeah, we have to get that at some point. I don't know what that's going to be, but we're going to get something. So, yeah. you know, he said there at the very beginning when they first met, you know, don't upstage me. So it, it makes me wonder yeah. if she does start to upstage him at some point yeah. in the rehearsals and the lead up to. Yeah to the play and that's where kind of the uh that's where the bad blood comes in between the two of them so it makes me wonder if that's where the the, the road they're going down but we'll have to wait and see on that obviously yeah but and her singing let's just say well, that's what it was too, yeah. unbelievable and that and that that leads us to the, you know the end of this episode because the the thing that char that oliver is chasing in the entire episode it's the thing that the producers the mom i can't remember the mom's name but uh the mom donna. is it donna Okay, so Donna says, you know, if you're going to a musical, you have to have a showstopper. It, it doesn't matter what else you do. If you don't have that showstopper, then the entire thing's dead. It's dead on arrival. And so he's in the process of just trying to chase the showstopper. And look, she's she's correct because if you think of you think of any musical out there and you're oh, probably yeah. there's a, there's a song that everyone thinks of like for cats it's memory the only reason that cats has been mm-hmm. played forever and ever and ever is because of memory most people say it's a horrible it's a horrible show but memory is just such an i the movie show. sure didn't work <laughs> i never saw it but uh i heard it was horrible uh but the only reason that 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 musical has, has lasted as long as it has is because of memory uh, i'm trying to think of some other ones that i can't think of any off the top of my head but um yeah, I can't think of me off the top of my head. But nevertheless, that's kind of the point. You have to have that one showstopper song. And that's what he's chasing the right. entire the entire episode. And he thinks it has to be this big, bombastic song that's big and loud. And it's not until he has that conversation with Loretta about, you know, the you know, the sp- even in, when Oliver is good and when his shows are good and his songs are good, even when they're big and even when they're loud, there is a personal, there's a vulnerability is what she says. There's a vulnerability underneath that. And that's when he breaks out the lullaby and he gives it to her. And Sarah Bur, I can never pronounce her name. Sarah Burrellis. Thank you. She actually wrote this song. Broadway person as yeah. well. And so she wrote this song and it's an absolutely gorgeous oh, song it really is. and it's yeah. gorgeously performed by, by initially by Meryl Streep. And then, uh, Ashley, what's her name? Um, Ashley Park. Ashley Park joins her about halfway through and kind of turns into a little bit of a duet. It's a beautiful scene. It's a beautiful song, and it is where this ends. And initially, Donna is like, it's good, but it's not my showstopper. And then Gil just overrides her and says, no, we're doing this. This is great. Yeah. It's an absolutely wonderful scene at the very end of the thing. It really is. And you just, man, Meryl Streep can do, can do it all. She yes, really she can. can. Like, what a voice. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's fantastic. I mean, uh, has she ever sung anything before? I'm trying to think. Mamma Mia. 
Okay, I never saw Mamma Mia. That's the reason I'm not thinking of that. So, okay. She's yeah. really good in that. Yeah, I never saw it's it. It's worth watching. Okay. Yeah, I never saw it, but I didn't, I didn't even think about that. And that's that's the one with all the ABBA songs. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's like I said, it's a beautiful performance by her. Uh, and... They, you know, they obviously lay that groundwork of continuing to try to lay a little bit of suspicion on to Kimber because uh, she's the one doing the voiceover and she has that kind of sinister line. She doesn't have her yeah. hanky. So uh, really interesting stuff that they're going to go down. So uh, anything else you want to discuss before we do our weekly awards? Yeah, I think we got it uh, all covered. Um, yeah. The, uh, Tobert, man. Or Tobert. Tobert. He's the one I'm watching. Yeah, he's the one to watch. And look, uh, they'll give us somebody else to watch next week. So. I know. <laughs> so I know. Don't worry. You'll have somebody else to watch next week. So, yeah. All right. Let's do some weekly awards then. All right. Here on the Main Attraction Podcast, whenever we are covering a season of a television show, we like to do three weekly awards. Up first is the Tyrion Lannister, the MVP for the week. Who is your MVP for this week? I'm going Martin Short and Meryl Streep. I went Martin Short, but I, th- I should probably throw Meryl Streep in there as well. Yeah, the, the, the singing sold it. Oh yeah, yeah, they're both fantastic. And like I said, Martin Short's having to carry this one a lot more than he probably yeah. normally does, just because they're focusing on him a lot with the with the musical going on, him writing all this type of stuff. I think that uh, he, he's having to give a big, big performance in in right. this episode. And I think he does a really good job of it. But again, yeah. Meryl Streep is just absolutely fantastic. Just giving, reminding him of the vulnerability that he's supposed to be showing right. as well. So I, uh, I like that as well. Uh, the actor all along, the best thing of the week. I think well, I both. I know we're both. Yeah, going. the sh- the showstopper. Yeah, it was fantastic. Her song. I don't remember what the name yeah. of the song was, but it's it's. I think absolutely. it's a lullaby, wasn't it? What it was called? I didn't know if that was. I didn't know if that was the name of it. I couldn't remember if that did, oh, okay. if it had a different name. So I just lullaby. So, uh, the if you come at the bit king, you best not miss your best line for the week. What'd you go with? I'm going with Charles saying a female killer that's been so overdone. Yeah, that was a good one. I went with one from Oliver because Oliver has so many great lines. Yes. Uh, he says, this is not, he's talking to Loretta. He says, this is not my best day as a director. That was in 1988 when I got my Tony. Tony was a dog I owned. Yes, I did choose that name to confuse people. <laughs> uh, yeah, he, he's just funny. He has oh, the man. best lines he in this entire show. So, All right. Uh, here on the Main Attraction Podcast, we have a five-tier rating system. At the top of our list is a succession. Uh, beneath the succession is a lost. Middle of the road force is friends. Beneath the friends is full house. And bottom of the barrel force is Baywatch. Uh, we've basically had this show since its inception as a succession. Are you keeping it there? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, there's nothing in this that made me want to go down so far. Yeah, no, I'm with you on that. It's it's just another good episode of television. It's just absolutely it's compl- it's very entertaining. It's a lot of fun to watch, and the performances are great. There's nothing to make me think that this is not going to continue to be a succession. So yeah. All right. Before we sign off for this week, uh, we would like to leave some our listeners some things that we're looking forward to. It's getting harder to do this. I know, man. <laughs> uh, I but, know it is. But we're trying. Uh, so uh, what are some things you're looking forward to coming up? All right. So I'm going to give us suggestions for this. We're starting to see shows that got are getting canceled. Right. I will mention the Peripheral, uh, A League of Their Own, or the two that started on Amazon. Right. Shows that are on the fringe that haven't been picked that have been that barely got picked up for another season are shows that are in the fringe that right. haven't been picked up. You need to go watch them. Yeah, you do. Because TV is about to get bare. Uh, I really like Joe Pickett on Paramount Plus. I haven't seen it mentioned for a season three. Oh, I'd like to that, see yeah. that. Yeah, The Lincoln Lawyer, uh, I think it's pretty much. I mean, it's one of the Netflix's biggest hits. I'd watch that. You know, these shows that you're not sure about that came out a few months ago. Go watch uh, Outer Range. Go, go, go watch Outer Range. <laughs> we want that Please to come back. Watch. Yes, that is a perfect. Uh, well, although it's been filmed, I think we're uh, okay there. Go okay. watch it. Okay, go I didn't watch know it. Been go watch it anyway. But anything that you haven't seen where they're still waiting on doing the next season, go ahead and watch them. Yeah, you're right about that because there's there's no telling what's they're going to do. Like I said, even if it's already got a renewal, because one you yeah. mentioned, uh, the peripheral one that we covered, one that uh, some mm-hmm. of you are listening to this podcast simply because that you we covered the peripheral. Um, right. It it was it had been renewed. Uh, and it wasn't like just the biggest show ever for Amazon, but they did go ahead and renew it for a second season. Now they have decided not to proceed with that show anymore. So uh, that one's been cut by the wayside, and it was specifically blamed on 
uh, yeah. the strikes uh, because they don't. It's not. They just won't be able to get to it. And they won't, there's going to be other things. They there are going to be other things that have yeah. a higher priority once the strikes come to an end. So uh, that's one. It's one of the first casualties that I can think of. So. Um, uh, anyway, so my things I'm looking forward to. Uh, I mentioned this last week. I'm mentioning it again. Ahsoka is coming out this week. We are going yeah. to take a break uh, from covering Only Murders in the Building this week so we can cover Ahsoka and so we can cover Twisted Metal. Uh, we want to go ahead and go back and cover that Peacock show. Uh, so if you haven't watched either, if you haven't watched Twisted Metal, go back and watch it. They're, it's 10 episodes long. They're about half an hour each. Uh, it, it, it's a fun show. Look, if, yeah, I was I'm looking look, forward to that. I have not watched it yet. If you don't like violence, I will say you probably don't want to watch that one uh, because it is violent to say the least. But uh, uh, but Ahsoka is coming out. This its official release date is on Wednesday of this week. However, Disney is doing something I think they should have done a long time ago. They are releasing the first two episodes at 6 p.m. Pacific time. So in our time zone, that's eight o'clock. I don't know what time zone you live in, but just do the math. Uh, on Tuesday night. Well, it's something that Apple does. Uh, it's something that sometimes yeah. Amazon will do. Occasionally, they'll release something uh, the night before its actual release date uh, just to kind of get it out there. I think it's a brilliant idea. I think it's something they should have done. Look, Disney is one of the greatest entertainment studios to ever exist. You would think that you know yes. they, they know what they're doing, but... The, like it, them taking so long to get on this bandwagon is surprising to me. So. Yeah, it really is. And this is what they're going to do every episode for Ahsoka. They're going to release it at 8 p.m. our time anyway uh, on Tuesday night. Uh, and like I said, I like that better just because I'll be able to, I, it makes it easier to watch and I don't have to worry about getting spoiled uh, the next day at work and all that type of stuff. So, yeah. Uh, so that's one thing I'm looking for. <sighs> I'm a little hesitant about this thing. I'm kind of looking forward to it, but it looks kind of scary. So I'm not really sure about it. But that's the Changeling Ooh. on Apple TV Plus. Have you heard about that? I don't. This doesn't sound familiar, but go ahead. It comes out in September. They're billing it as like a fairy tale for adults. It's kind of like it's it's like a fairy tale. It's like fantasy. It's like horror. So uh, it's really weird. Uh, oh, Lakeith Stanfield. Yeah, is Lakeith the star. Stanfield is the star in it. Uh, it looks really, really good, but it also looks really scary. So y'all okay. know I don't do horror. So uh, I'm a little hesitant about it. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, I'm a little hesitant about it, but nevertheless, it looks like it's. It looks good. It really does. So I'm, I'm going to kind of try to break out of my comfort zone on this one and, and check it out. I think it comes out September 8th or something like that, or September 9th. Yeah, that's what it looks like. September 8th. You're correct. So, uh, looking forward to that one. So, like I said, we're we're we're, we're losing things to look forward to. So, uh, we'll just have to kind of see what else we can look forward to. Anything yeah. else you want to add before we sign off for the week? Appreciate everyone joining us, and we will talk to you next time. I would echo those same sentiments. And as always, until next time, may all of your entertainment dreams come true.